Hello there, guys and girls, and welcome to another episode of Merchant Times with Sinbad the Great. Wow, that was the worst intro of all time. Nonetheless, though, what's up? How's it going, everybody? It's been a while. You know what actually happened since last week? Like, from last week till this day in this one week? Well, I am now officially a graduate in computer science, and uh, I've got my degree. And now I can start feeling bad about being unemployed and sitting on my ass all day and playing games. Um, I wanted to show you guys, I wanted to start this episode with the income tab. You can see we're making so much money at every single establishment, it's just absurd. We're making 1,191 in Suno, 609 in Sheriz, and 509 in Ahmaraz. And now, in this episode, we're going to continue gathering companions. So we're making our way down to Halmar over here. Where's Halmar? There it is, because we've got some furs to deliver. Ugh. But first, we must, we must visit that one village there. That village usually always has lots of things. So these are 6.4. We're actually quite fast now. now <coughs> excuse me. Again, wow, really cheap grain. And the reason I'm doing these trips now, and you'll notice that I'll do this sometimes, is I'll start visiting vill villages of, uh, of places. The reason I do this mainly is because I want to see what kind of resources tend to dominate the local level goods market for these peasants. All right, let's take, let's check out the local pricing here. Or right, oh my gosh, we've got spice for Suno for 467. That's just absurd. That's just absurd profit here. Cheap grapes are always good for our products elsewhere in the empire or in the land. Um, this is good. We got spice, we got grapes. We need to get rid of these shitty ones. Some people were telling me that I orient the map wrongly or some shit. And let me make this clear. I don't really care. Um, because for me, I've always played it this way. <laughs> and if I play it a different way, then it's going to feel very awkward and very different for me. So, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Another person was saying how I should be giving more effort into the customization of my companions. And um, I think uh, I think there's merit to that. Definitely based on their characters, I should be probably supplying them with different types of, um, of armor and clothing. But at this stage where I am in the campaign now, uh, my aim is to get as rich as possible. Like, let me kind of lay down some frameworks as to what I'm at least trying to do. I want to I wanna get some money. I want to be able to generate lots of money. I want to get at least like 50,000 dinars. And then I'm going to just go ham. That's really expensive. I'm just going to go ham on, um, on like, you know, recruiting men, um, buying soldiers... Uh, expanding our empire then I'm gonna start worrying about the kingdom features in this and maybe my phone can stop ringing for two seconds there let's buy some sausage <laughs> uh, some sausage is always always nice okay so so yeah the reason I don't want my companions to get all the fancy equipment now is because I'm trying my hardest to obtain money to get rich fast to get the to get the because of the aim here remember the aim is to make an empire to make a kingdom that's that's really functioning because of the the all the different types of establishments we've got in it and because of the trade and the patrols that we're setting up so it's kind of like a trade trade like a trade conglomerate kind of styled thing that I'm trying to build here or in roleplay at least in reality it's like a trade monarchy yes there is now we're gonna be really fast like we're gonna seriously be like so fast you won't even the speed of this is gonna be we're 7.5 right now that's really cool all right so I'm not gonna dip down here. I'm gonna go right up to uh, to Vagerland, and I think uh, there's going like you can see Nords have t has have taken Kura. 
the Kyrgyz have basically taken over the Serenids. The Serenids only have two major cities now. They're at a serious threat of being eliminated from this game. And so really, the first place we're going to be thinking of attacking is uh, maybe here in Barrie. Maybe we can capture capture Bardak Castle for ourselves. Even though we were we were previously lords of the Serenids, but since we're looking like we're seeing around, we're looking around, we're kind of gauging uh, the kingdom's status, and we are noticing that you know the the Serenids they're getting they're getting uh, they're getting pretty wrecked with a T <laughs> and uh, and a K, and yeah. We're gonna have to step in at some point. Holy crap, that was a dodge. Did you see that dodge? That was a dodge of mighty proportions. Them reaction speeds. Okay. Chicken! <laughs> they sell chicken in this village. We're gonna run into a companion for this episode. It is a belligerent drunk. Uh. Uh, he does know who I am. Please forgive me, Your Grace. It must be the drink. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> uh, we got him, Rolf. <laughs> oh, man. That is just great. Okay. Revidan, what do you have to offer for us? Raw silk to Suno. Why would I sell... Oh, what? What? There's cheap raw silk? Oh... It's still cheaper than Suno, so that means we can buy it for our... Um, for our... Uh, our weavery there. And you can see we've started hitting the silks. According to the game, the only silk press is really in in a town called Jelkala in, um, in Rodox. But as, as as you've seen, we can't really find silk anywhere other than uh, Vagar villages. Like, we're talking, we're talking like, you know, the only kind of sure, it's not even sure. Like, sometimes we'll go around all these villages and we'll only obtain one, there's just so many bandits. But yeah, like you'll go around all these villages and you'll only really find one. So it's, it's a very rare resource. And that's why I chose the business because I knew that it's going to cost a lot to... It, one, it's going to cost a lot to make. But then again, it's going to be a lot to sell, right? Because that's how it goes. So the issue with companions is, is that they have kind of like two different circles where... Certain companions dislike each other, other companions like each other. So Rolf here, for example, Rolf likes uh, Katrin. No, 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 no. Life, Rolf likes, uh, I think his name is Bash, Bashter or something like that. But then he dislikes Bunduk and Dishavi. We haven't met those yet, so that doesn't matter. We have Jeremus now in our, in our party, I believe. Like, let's look at the party. Yeah, we have Jeremus, Marnid... And Rolf. Jeremus dislikes Artinimer and Metelt. Uh, and he doesn't. He likes a spe he, he likes a guy called Ferentis. So if we find Ferentis, we're gonna recruit Ferentis. Alright, so this is how it's gonna be separated. Rolf is gonna get tracking and pathfinding. He's gonna be like the hunter type. That's gonna be his thing. Marnid is gonna get. <coughs> Spotting, he's gonna get one in spotting, one in engineer, and Nissa is gonna get uh, it's gonna she's gonna get one in trade, and she's also gonna be helping up in pathfinding and spotting. So they're gonna be kind of overlapped, and at the same time, I'm gonna try to increase all of their physical stats so they become durable in battle. I think Rolf is the best one, uh, and I think Nissa is better than Marnid. Um, also, let me create... Uh, Marnid needs a horse. Let's give him a horse. A really crappy horse, but... It's a horse nonetheless. We'll worry about... Um, <clears throat> we'll worry about getting the right, uh, the right equipment for them later. Um, 
once we continue this trip. So here we are at Kudan. We have acquired four companions. And we are now ready to continue our journey um, back to Serenid land. We haven't been collecting as many grapes maybe as we should have. But we have our companions now. I think I might get one or two more over the course of the next few episodes. So here you can see that Tsuno now, we didn't get there in time. So this week they didn't make, they only made 13. If we don't get there in time with the goods, they will make less money. Um, but when you give them the goods, they'll obviously make more money. So here we are. Let's go into the accounts. Right now they're, they're at the negative. So it's very good that we actually show up here because this will help them uh, tremendously. It's a big battle between the Serenids and the Norge. That's so not cool. Uh, bandits attacking this one. I don't really care. Gilbert Tigerclaw would have attacked that hands down. Oh, it appears that we have been ambushed, my friends. Yes, indeed. All right, Zeramis, charge, you fool. You will not die this time, Ralph. Nice one, Ralph. Did you see that strafe shot? Oh, that strafe shot, no. Why don't you have a shield, Rolf? God damn it. I need to buy him a shield. But there we go. We killed them. Paying for accommodation, accommodation at Yalin. Wine at Barrier. Actually, we're... We're gonna do that. <laughs> Why not? Wine to Barrier and look at those grapes, just as expected from the productive towns of the Rodox. Thank you, sir! Excellent. Okay. Let's continue. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. We're not done. We need to sell them. We need to sell some things. The salt to Yalan. And where was the spice? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's take a look at the ledger. This is the best thing about the ledger. You can look back and you can actually check for your prices. Spice in Suno. We forgot to sell the spice to put the spice in Suno. We're going to have to go back to Suno. Oh my gosh. Terrible. Terrible. Terrible, I tell you. Um. Well... How much is it selling here? 906? Dude. Dude. Uh, that's... <laughs> we bought it for 400 something. So that is... I will take that deal gladly. Cheap grapes from the beautiful, beautiful peasants. I want to attend the tournament and sure is. But yeah, I, I hope you guys have been enjoying this series. I hope it's been kind of giving you some uh, inspiration to maybe go back and play Warband. Uh, wool to Ichamore. Wool to Ichamore. Not that much. Pretty expensive grapes, but still cheaper than the, what we can get in the Serenid land. We've got Ferentis. Let's see here. So Ferentis is actually really, 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 really good friends with Jeremus. So this guy is perfect for us. Ferentis, welcome back, friend. It appears that I actually had him in my group as well before. So look at this. It's kind of fallen, fallen nicely together here. And let's go to the vineyard. Uh, wine press. I keep calling it vineyard or vineyard. And I, I, I want to say press, but it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't want to happen. I'm also over encumbered now. I seriously need some... Uh, <laughs> Some strength. So here we are. We have horses, dyes, wine for Barrier. We're going to deliver the wine. We're going to see if anyone is in these taverns. We're probably going to wrap this episode up. Dyes are welcome additions to my inventory. I think salt. We're going to be able to get some cheap prices on salt. Maybe in somewhere in Rodox or Nords. Spice at... Yeah. So spice at Sargoth. 
and salt at it again at Yalin. Even though they live right by the sea, you'd think they'd have lots of salt, but... We have Nizar. Now, Nizar is not going to be a good addition to this party because he hates uh, Ferentis. Ferentis also has high intelligence. He needs maybe one point to get some of the cool things. I think he's going to be helping in pathfinding, and he's probably going to be helping with looting a little bit. We started this episode with about 15,000 monies. We've gained 4,000 in the duration of this episode, and yeah, we're going to probably want to open up an ale shop somewhere in uh, the Kyrgyz towns, but stay tuned for that for episode number two. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Take care.